Pat. I work here at Rediscovered Books, and for our Banned Books Week, I read the banned book Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. It's um, a memoir of her life um, as a young girl growing up in abject poverty with two very dysfunctional parents, one alcoholic and one mentally ill. And as she grows up, she starts to realize that life isn't quite the fun adventure that her parents keep trying to make it out to be, and she's exposed to a lot of very dangerous situations, um, extreme extreme cold and hunger, um, and just a lot of unpleasantness, and eventually she and her um, other very intelligent siblings um, all escape that life. And I'm, I'm going to read a passage, which was the paragraph wherein, or the page wherein, I first realized that her parents were kind of crazy and irresponsible. <laughs> Um, all right. Let's see. Mom and Dad rented a great big U-Haul truck. Mom explained that since only she and Dad could fit in the front of the U-Haul, Lori, Brian, Maureen, and I were in for a treat. We got to ride in the back. It would be fun, she said, a real adventure, but there wouldn't be any light, so we would have to use all our resources to entertain one another. Plus, we were not allowed to talk. Since it was illegal to ride in the back, anyone who heard us might call the cops. Mom told us the trip would be about 14 hours if we took the highway, but we should tack on another couple hours because we might make some scenic detours. We packed up what furniture we had. There wasn't much, mostly parts for the prospector and a couple chairs and Mom's oil paintings and art supplies. When we were ready to leave, Mom wrapped Maureen in a lavender blanket and passed her to me, and we kids all climbed into the back of the U-Haul. Dad closed the doors. It was pitch black and the air smelled stale and dusty. We were sitting on the ribbed wooden floor on frayed stained blankets used to wrap furniture, feeling for one another with our hands. Here goes the adventure, I whispered. Shh, Lori said. The U-Haul started up and I lurched forward. Maureen let loose with a loud, high-pitched wail. I shushed her and rocked her and patted her, but she kept crying. So I gave her to Lori, who whispered sing-song in her ear and told jokes. That didn't work either, so we begged Maureen to please stop crying, and then we just put our hands over our ears. After a while, it got cold and uncomfortable in the back of the dark U-Haul. The engine made the floor vibrate, and we'd all go tumbling whenever we hit a bump. Several hours passed. By then, we were all dying to pee and wondering if Dad was going to pull over for a rest stop. Suddenly, with a bang, we hit a huge pothole, and the back doors on the U-Haul flew open. The wind shrieked through the compartment. We were afraid we were going to get sucked out, and we all shrank back against the prospector. The moon was out. We could see the glow from the U-Haul's taillights and the road we'd come down, stretching back through the silvery desert. The unlocked doors swung back and forth with loud clangs. Since the furniture was stored between us and the cabin, we couldn't knock on the wall to get Mom and Dad's attention. We banged on the sides of the U-Haul and hollered as loud as we could, but the engine was too noisy and they didn't hear us. Brian called to the back of the van. When one of the doors swung in, he grabbed at it, but it flew open again, jerking him forward. I thought the door was going to drag Brian out, but he jumped back just in time and scrambled along the wooden floor towards Lori and me. Brian and Lori held tight to the prospector, which Dad had tied securely with ropes. I was holding Maureen, who for some strange reason had stopped crying. I wedged myself into a corner. It seemed like we'd have to ride it out. 